Hi, it's Anastasia and welcome to my channel. Today I want to talk to you about what programming language you should learn if you want to get involved in quantum computing. I'm going to introduce you to some of these quantum computing frameworks and packages that are out there and give you all the resources that you need to get you started on coding on real quantum computers today. And yes, quantum computers do exist. They're actually out there, they're for real, that's a question I get asked a lot, and uh, you can code with some of these packages on real quantum chips. Physicists do tend to code in a lot of different programming languages. So for example, I've done work with C, C++, even Fortran. So I graduated college in 2012 and I actually still used Fortran. The supercomputer upstairs would only take that. But don't worry, quantum computing has come to a more modern age. So if you want to learn coding and get involved in quantum computing, what programming language should you study? My recommendation is for you to learn Python. And I know you hear that a lot, but hear me out. There's three major reasons why you should learn Python if you want to get involved in quantum computing. It's easy to learn, there's a ton of resources out there, and a lot of quantum computing frameworks are written for Python. Now I know there's a lot of awesome quantum computing languages out there that are not based on Python. There's q which is Microsoft's quantum programming language based on C-sharp, and there's Silk, which is this new programming language out of ETH Zurich, which looks really cool. But I want to cover those in another video. So if you're new to programming and eventually want to get involved with quantum computing, these are the reasons that I think you should learn Python. So number one, it's simple syntax and easy to learn. Python is beginner friendly. Even if you're new to programming and haven't touched code before, Python is almost written like a sentence, so you can almost intuitively feel like what it's supposed to do. And Python is basically everywhere. For example, the Mac OS comes with it pre-installed, so you don't even have to install anything or do any complicated setup to get started with Python. You can do so many things with Python. I've used it for web apps, web scrapers, automate some boring stuff to save me time, so it's a pretty amazing language. In fact, according to Stack Overflow, Python is now the most popular programming language, overtaking Java and JavaScript, so definitely a great thing to learn. Number two, lots of resources out there. Like I mentioned, you can use Python for scripting, web development, AI, and now quantum computing. Because people use it for so many things, there are so many resources out there. So you can learn from books, YouTube videos, or interactive coding tutorials. And because Python is beginner friendly and a lot of people learn it as their first programming language, it'll introduce you to all these broader coding concepts. So don't worry if you don't know anything about for loops or recursion, it'll usually be covered in these resources. So down below in the description, I've linked a bunch of my favorite Python learning resources. My favorite online course is Dr. Chuck's Python for Everybody. I really love it because it not only introduces you to Python thinking, but also introduces you to mathematical and computational thinking. If you're more of a book reader, here are two books I'd recommend for learning about Python. The first one is called Learn Python the Hard Way, and it's been updated for Python 3, and it's one of the first programming books I've ever picked up. The other one that I heard great things about is Python Crash Course. For those who'd like to do more YouTube videos and learning coding from there, Free Code Camp has a four and a half hour YouTube tutorial, so just make sure to break it up into little chunks and make a study plan to get through it. And finally, if you learn better through interactive coding tutorials, python.org's learning tutorials are amazing. And number three, the most important reason why you should learn Python is because there's so many Python frameworks for quantum computing. A few years ago, if you wanted to code on a quantum computer, it meant that you had to be a researcher in a secret lab or in graduate school to get access to one. Now that's not true anymore. Quantum computers exist and there are cloud systems that let you log in and run code on a real quantum computer. Companies are now making quantum computers. This has really opened up the opportunity for anyone who wants to try to running code on a quantum computer to do it. A lot of these packages are also open source and welcome contributions from anyone, so you can really get started right now with programming for quantum computers. While there are more quantum computing frameworks than just these that I'm going to talk about, some of them are kind of closed source or not available to anyone unless you're part of a university or a group, so I really wanted to focus on the ones where you don't need any special access. So let's talk about CERC. CERC is Google's library for writing, manipulating, and simulating quantum circuits. Currently, you can't run any of these circuits on Google's quantum computing chips, but they have said that it'll make it available soon, so cross your fingers. Another really cool thing about Google is that the team at X has released TensorFlow Quantum. This is really awesome because there's a ton of people there working on quantum machine learning. TensorFlow Quantum works with quantum data and working with both classical machine learning models and quantum models together. To start learning about TensorFlow Quantum, go to their website because there's a ton of code and learning samples and Jupyter Notebooks that you can play around with to learn more about the system. Another framework is called Qiskit. Qiskit is IBM software development package for working with noisy quantum computers at all different levels. 
They have four different modules to use called Terra, Air, Ignis, and Aqua, used for working with quantum computers from the circuit and the pulse level all the way up to the optimized algorithms level. Terra has the low level elements, so for example, the circuits and the pulses. Air is the simulator and the noise models. Ignis is really used for mitigation of those noise models. And Aqua is used for higher level quantum algorithms. You can run these on IBM's real quantum chips in the cloud. IBM has also released an open source textbook with basic quantum computing concepts and how to use Qiskit. They also have a ton of tutorials and Jupyter notebooks that are already set up with example code and concepts so you can run code very quickly. Ocean is D-Wave's tool. You can use Ocean to connect to D-Wave's Leap platform and run code on their simulators or D-Wave's actual machines. D-Wave is a quantum annealer, so it's a little bit different from the other two. This type of machine is great for optimization problems, where you need to quickly search over the space and find a minimum or a solution to a problem. Their webinar series has a super fun tutorial in choosing a Pokemon team using Cubo, which is Quantum Unconstrained Binary Optimization, which is a common algorithm in machine learning. So you can use a quantum computer to choose the best Pokemon team. Beyond that, there are just so many packages and toolboxes out there for Python to make working with quantum computers way easier. For example, like Qtip or Project Q. Also, a company called Xanadu has released PennyLane, which is a Python library for quantum machine learning that connects to a bunch of different cloud platforms and helps you run quantum code on real computers. So Python is a great programming language to learn if you're interested in working with quantum computers one day. It's also a generally good programming language to have in your skill set. A bunch of companies are hiring Python programmers and it's one of the fastest growing languages out there. So whether you're just starting out in computer science or you're an experienced programmer, there's a chance for anyone at any level to become involved with quantum computing today. So I've included a bunch of resources below, all the ones I've talked about, the different webinars and tutorials that I've talked about in this video. Click the description, they'll all be in there. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you found some interesting new resources and are considering getting into quantum computing programming. So if you did, I'd appreciate it if you smashed the like button below and subscribed if you want more videos on this. And feel free to comment down below if you have any questions on quantum computing or software, I'd be happy to answer.